We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Chesam and Vesota. This is Sota Daf 48b. The Gemara continues to darshan the Pesuk, the Pesach in Yeshayo is talking about people who celebrate with wine and music after the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash. The Pesach goes on to say here, Chiva Shol Navshu for Apio Livli Chok Viyarad Hadara Vahamono Shaona Vaalazba. The idea of the Pesach is that the netherworld it opens its mouth to receive to punish these people. Rashi explains here, Chiva Shol Navshu Laachar Sheiviu Chamish Puranius Halolo. After they get these five punishments that were described on the previous. In the end, they're going to end up in Gehenim. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, from when the first prophets died, so then the Urim Vitumim ceased. And the Gemara says, Man Nevi'im Harishonim. Who are these early prophets? Amr Avuna Avuna says that David U Shmuel U Shlomo. This refers to David and Shmuel and Shlomo. Rav Nachman Amr Rav Nachman says, Be made David during the times of David Zimnin Solik Vizimnin Lo Solik. Sometimes the Urim Vitumim were effective, and sometimes it was not effective. Sharei Shalt Tzadok Vialsolo because Tzadok asked the Urim Vitumim, he got a satisfactory answer. Shal Evialsolo also lo, but Evialsolo asked, and he did not receive such an answer. Shenemar, as the pasuk says, Vayal Evialsolo that Evialsolo ascended. And Rashi explains him in Solik Pa'amim Olim Biyadam Shenanim Pa'amim Shalolah Biyadam. Sometimes they were answered, sometimes they were not. Sharei Kishabarach David Mibnei Avshalom because when David was fleeing from Avshalom, Yatsam Yerushalayim Shal Tzadok Be'Urim Vetumim. So at that time, Tzadok asked the Urim Vetumim, "We also lo Shashivu," and he gave an answer. V'Shal of Yasser v'Lo also lo, but if Yasser asked, he did not get an answer. Shenema like it says, "Vayal of Yasser," and what does it mean, "Vayal of Yasser"? It means Shenistalik Mina Kuhuni was actually removed from the position of the Kuhuni and they Shalo Nana because he wasn't answered by Urim Vetumim. He wasn't answered by the Urim Vetumim. And the Gemara continues, Mosav Rabba Bar Shmuel, Rabba Bar Shmuel asks, the Pasuk says, Vahi Lidro Shalokim Kol Yemei Zecharia, Maven Biro Shalokim. It seems to be that even in the times of Zecharia, that's after the times of David and Shmuel and Shlomo, that they were still seeking the advice of God. My La Urim Vetumim, and doesn't it mean they were seeking the advice of God from the Urim Vetumim? And this was even after, again, the time of Shlomo. And the Gemara answers, Lo, no, Benavim, we were talking about the prophets in that situation. They were asking the prophets for guidance. And the Gemara continues, Tashma, coming here, another proof, Mishachara, Beis HaMikdash Rishon, from the time the first Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, Batlu Are Migrash, so the open, the cities with the open fields of the Levium, they were Batl, they were nullified, Upasku Urim Vitumim, and the Urim Vitumim ceased, Upasak Melech Mi Beis David, and also there ceased to be a king from the house of David HaMelech. Vim Lachashchadim Lomer, if a person's going to whisper to you, if a person will quote the following Pasuk, Vayomer Hatar Shasa Lehem, Asher Lo Yochlu Mikodesh HaKadoshim, Aramod Kohen Le Urim Vitumim, Pasuk seems to be indicating that pretty soon, once again, the Kohen will will return, the Urim Vitumim will, will return, Emor Lo, so you should respond to him as follows. That Pasuk, what that Pasuk means is, Ka'adam Shomer Lechavero, it's like a person who says to his friend, At Sheyichyu Mesim, V'yavu Mashiach Ben David, until the time that there's Trias HaMesim, that the dead come back to life, until the time that Mashiach Ben David comes. In other words, he was speaking about the distant future, he wasn't something, uh, he wasn't speaking about something that was going to happen soon. In any case, though, there's a question from over here, because it says it was from after the times of the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash, of the first Beis HaMikdash that the Urim Vitumim ceased, and not after Shlomo HaMelech. El Amr of Nachman, so rather of Nachman, El Amr of Nachman Bar Yitzchak, rather of Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, Man Nevi'im Harishon, what does it mean that after the early prophets there no longer was the Urim Vitumim? La Fuke Me Chagai Zechariah Malachi, that just means to exclude Chagai Zechariah Malachi, meaning the Urim Vitumim ceased before the very last of the prophets. The Achronim Ninu, because Chagai Zechariah Malachi, they were the last of the prophets, so already from the time of earlier prophets than them, the Urim Vitumim ceased. And the Gemara continues, the Tanur Rabbanon, as the rabbis taught, Mishamesu Chagai Zechariah Malachi, from the time the Chagai Zechariah Malachi died, Nestalko Ruach HaKodesh Mi Yisrael. That's when Ruach HaKodesh left Klal Yisrael. Be'afa Pichain, and nevertheless, so Yimishtamshim Be'baskol, they still were able to use Baskol as a form of guidance. Shepamacha, so Yimishuben Ba'aliyas Be'ez Gurya Be'eriko, because one time they were sitting in the upper in the upper attic of the house of Gurya and Yericho, Nasna Alei and Baskol Min HaShemayim, and there was a Baskol that came out from the heavens. V'yomran, it said, Yesh Bochem Adam Echad, there's among you one person, Sheroi Shetish Roshchina Olav, who's fit that the Shah can rest upon him. Upon him, Elishein Dora Roy Lakach, except that his generation is not fit for such a thing. And Nasnu Einayim Behil Hazaken, and they all turned their eyes towards Hill Hazaken, Hill of the Elder. He's the one that the Baskol was speaking of. Uchashemesim, when he died, his pidu, they gave him the follow, following eulogy. Hai Chosid, Hai Onav, he's pious, he's humble. Talmido Shalezra, he's a student of Ezra. 
V'shuv ba'am acheres, and then another time, ha'yu mesuben ba'aliyah b'yavne, they were sitting in the upper story of Yavne, nitno nasna lehen baskol min ha'shamayim, and again a baskol came out from the heavens, v'yamrlan, and said to them, yeish b'chem adam echad, sh'roi sh'tishr sh'china olav, there is among you one person with the sh'china can rest upon him, ela she'ein doro zakoin l'kach, except again his generation is not is not fit for that, does not merit that, Nasnu einayim b'shmol hakaton. They placed their eyes on shmol hakaton. Uchashemaisin when he died, he spidu. They gave him the same eulogy. Hayonav haychosid. He's humble. He's pious. Talmido shel hilol. He's a student of hilol. V'yafu amar b'shas misas. When even he said at the time of his death, Shimon v'yishmol lechor. But he prophesied. He said that Shimon. That's a reference to Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel and Rabbi Yishmol. They're going to be destroyed. They're going to be destroyed by the sword. V'chavroi and their colleagues l'ktala. They're also going to be killed. Usharamo leviza v'akon sagi and asidin lemesa yala. And the rest of the nation is going to be plundered, and terrible things in the future will come upon the nation. The Afal Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava Bikshu Lomar Haychosed Hayonif, and even on Rabbi Yehuda ben Bava they wanted to eulogize him using the same words Haychosed Hayonif that he's pious and that he's humble. El Shenitra Fasha Shein Maspidan Nahalarugei Malchus, but the time did not allow it because you're not allowed to give such eulogies on people who are killed by the government. It's something that when the government sees that someone they killed is being eulogized in that fashion, it just angers the enemy government. And Rashi explains the Tanya, as we learned in a Brisa, Chagai Zacharim Malachi Nikru Achronim. The Chagai Zacharim Malachi, they're called the last prophets. Shimon and Yishmol. Then it said that Shmuel Hakatan. He said that Shimon and Yishmol would die by the sword. That's Rabbi Shimon Shaya Nasi. That refers to Rabbi Shimon, who was the Nasi. That's Rabbi Shimon Gamliel. Rabbi Yishmol ben Elisha Kohen Gadol Shargasa Malchus Yavan, and Rabbi Shmuel ben Elisha Kohen Gadol, who was killed by the Greek Empire, and that should really be the Roman Empire that killed them. The Charba Shasid and Leharig Becherav. Again, in the future, they'd be killed by the sword, and their colleagues, Liktal Lashar Misus, their colleagues would die other forms of death. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Mishachara Beis HaMikdosh Batal HaShamir V'chulu. It says from when the Beis HaMikdosh was destroyed, so the creature, the Shamir, it was Batal, it ceased. And the Gemara says, Tanu Rabban and the Rabbis taught, Shamir Shabo Bona Shlomo Es Beis HaMikdosh. The Shamir was the creature with which Shlomo used to build the Beis HaMikdosh. The Shamir was a creature which was able to cut the stones that were used in the Beis HaMikdosh. And Emmer, as the Pasuk says, V'habayis bibonosu evin shleimah masa nivne hadvarim kechsavan divri Rabbi Yehuda. What the Pasuk seems to be indicating is that no metal objects were to be used to cut the stones. And Rabbi Yehuda says, you should understand the Pasuk in its simple explanation, the Shamir was used to cut those stones for the Beis HaMikdosh. Amar lo Rabbi Nechemia, Rabbi Nechemia said to Rabbi Yehuda, V'chiev shal Omar Kain, is it possible to say this? V'alok var nemar, but doesn't the Pasuk already say, Kol eila avonim yukaros megoros b'migra, it says on the contrary, it says they were sawed with a saw, that they did use metal tools in order to cut the stones. Im kain mat hamad lomar lo nishma b'bayis b'bonoso, so if that's the case, what did the Pasuk mean when it sounded like it's saying that there was no metal that was at all heard in the Beis HaMikdosh? And what that means is, Shoyim esakin mi b'chutz u'machnus mi b'fnim. It means they would cut the stones outside the area of the Beis HaMikdosh, and then they would bring them in. They were already cut. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rebbe, Rebbe says, Nirin divrei Rebbe Yehuda ba'avnei Mikdosh. It appears that Rebbe Yehuda is correct when we're talking about the stones that were used for the Beis HaMikdosh. V'divrei Rebbe Nechemya ba'avnei Beisah. But Rebbe Nechemya is correct when we're talking about the stones that were used for his own palace, meaning for the palace of Shlomo HaMelech. And the Gemara continues, Reb Nechemya, but according to Reb Nechemya, Shamir Lamayasa, what was the creature, the Shamir, what was it used for? And the Gemara says, Mi boy that was needed for what we learned in the following Brisa. Avonim Halalu, this is talking about the stones that were on the ephod, in Kozvin Osan Bidio. So we know we had the names of the Shvatim on the stones that were on the ephod, but you can't write on them with Dio, you don't write with ink, Mishum Shenemar, because it says in the Pasuk, Pituche Chosim, that they were engraved. Vein Misartin Aleim Bizemel, but you're also not allowed to use an Izemel, you can't use like a knife to scratch the names in there, Mishum Shenemar Bimilu Osam, because it says in the Pasuk that the stones had to be whole, the stones couldn't be cut. Ella, rather, what did they do? Kosev Aleim Bidio, they wrote the names on with ink, Umar Elohen Shamir Mi Bachutz, and then they showed the stones to the Shamir, the Shamir didn't even touch them, the Shamir was just on the outside, so to speak, Vein Nivkos Me and then the stones cracked on their own, Kitaina zu like a fig, Shinivkas bi Mosachama that it cracks in the summertime, Vaina Khasera Klum, but it's not missing anything. And that's what happened with these stones as well. They didn't lose anything. They were the same size. They were just able to crack the names of the Shvatim. Uchabik Azu, and it's like a valley, Shinivkas bi Mosagashama, that also the field over there, the fields over there they crack in the rainy season. Vaina Khasera Klum, but they're not lacking anything. They don't get any smaller. And the Gemara continues, Tanur Rabban and the Rabbis taught, Shamir Zebriyosu Kisaura, the Shamir, it's the size of a barley, 
Umisheshas Yime Bereshas never and from the from the six days of creation, that's when it was created. Vain called over Kasha Yachalamud Bifanov and nothing, no matter how, how hard of a surface it cannot withstand the Shamir. But Mem is Shamarno, so now how do they watch it? How do they keep it if it breaks everything? Karchano so be Svugan shall summer, they wrap it in in wool in wool, umanichano so be itni shalever, and then they put it inside a, a lead vessel, Malaya Sube Saorn, and it's filled with barley, and uh, and in that way these soft materials they protect from the Shamir. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Ami says, Mishachar Mikdash Rishon, from the time that the first base on Mikdash was destroyed, Batla Shira Paranda, the shiny silk was bottle, that ceased to exist, it was a Chuchas Lavana and the white glass, Tanya Nami Hachi, we have a Brysa like this as well, Mishachar Mikdash Rishon, from the time of the destruction of the first base on Mikdash, Batla Shira Paranda, the shiny silk ceased, it was a Chuchas Lavana and also the white glass, the Rech of Barzil, and also the Iron Chariots. The Yesh Omrim, and some say, Af Yayin Koresh Habam Isnir, even the congealed wine that comes from Sneer, that also ceased, Hadoma Kigule Devela, when it congeals, it's similar to the round cakes of fig. And Rashi explains, Devarim Kechsav, and take the Pasuk as, it, as it's written, the simple meaning, Kemashma, and Evan Shlema Masa Kemashe Sia, Minahar, meaning take the stones from the mountain. Velosid Sua Shubachli Barzal, don't use metal objects in order to cut the stones. Shamir Lamayasa, now if you say that they did use metal to cut the stones, so what was the Shamir for? Da Amrinam Meseches Kitten, Sheviu Shamir, Al Yedei Ashmedoi Malka de Shadoi, because it says in Meseches Kitten that they did bring the Shamir through Ashmedoi, who was the king of the demons. Avonim Halolu Shebe Ephod, Vichoshan, again we're talking about the stones on the Ephod and the stones on the Choshan. Pituche Chosam Chokak Mashvet, sounds like you're engraving those stones. Bimilu Awesome, but on the other hand, it says they have to be complete, whole. They have to be whole. They can't be missing anything. Again, they, they showed the Shamir, where the Dio was, the, the name. And Rashi continues, They kept the Shamir in a lead vessel. That means a small box that is made out of lead. Shira Parandam in Meshu. Again, it's a kind of silk, this kind of shiny silk, which ceased to exist. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said that when the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, the other thing that ceased was Vinofes Tzufim. The Nofes Tzufim. My Nofes Tzufim. What is Nofes Tzufim? Amar Rav Rav says, Soles Shetzof al Gabe Nofe. It's the flower that floats up on top of the sieve. Vedoma Isa Shenilosha Bidvash Veshemin. It's similar to dough that is kneaded with honey and oil, and so that ceased to exist. The Levi Amar and Levi says, Shteki Karos Hanid Bakos Petanur. It's two loaves that are on the walls of the oven, Vitovchos, and they swell up. Uvo Sachemagio Zulazu. They become so large that they touch one another. That ceased to exist. Rabbi Yoshub and Levi Amar and Rabbi Yoshub and Levi says, Zedvash Habam in Hatsifia. This is the honey that comes from the Tsifia. And some have the gear says, Rashi has here Minhat Sufim from Sufim. What's that? Taharam Hagvoim Shemisham Tsofalam Erachak. It means it comes from the high mountains where one can look off into the distance. And the Gemara continues, My mashma, from where do we see this idea that the honey comes from high up? Kidimitargim Rav Sheshes, it's like Rav Sheshes translated the Pasuk, Kimodinatsun de Briosov a Shaitan Burumayalm, it says the bee, like the bees they fly high in the sky, Umasyon Duvsha me Isve Tura, and they bring the honey from the grasses of the mountains. That's a translation of a Pasuk in Sefer Devarim. And Rashi explains, My mashma mehecha yalafcha dvash bum in a harem, from where do we know that honey comes from the mountains? Kidimitargim Rav Yosef, it's like Rav Yosef translated the Pasuk in Sefer Devarim. The Pasuk says, Kasher Tasena Hadvorim, like the bees do. And again, he translates it that the bees, they go up to the mountains to get the honey. And the Gemara continues, Tanan Hasam, we learned in a mission over there. This is a mission in Machshirin. Kol Hanitzok Tar, anytime you pour, so the vessel you're pouring from will remain tar. Let's say you're pouring from a pure vessel to an impure vessel. Chutz mi dvash zifim, except for the zifim honey, vatsapichim, and the tzapichim refers to a kind of batter. These are thicker substances. My zifim, so what does it mean, the word zifim? Am Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, dvash shemizayfin bo, it means a honey that you can forge it, meaning you could add substances, and it's and it's so thick you won't be able to tell. Reish Lakish, Am Reish Lakish, Al Shem Mekomo, zifim is actually just the name of the place where the honey comes from, Kedichsev, like the Pasuk says, zifetelem valos, these are all names of places. Kayotze bedavar atomer, there's a similar similar Machlokas in the following. The Zifim came and they told Shaul that David stayed with them. My Zifim, what does it mean? Zifim. I'm Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, B'nei Adam HaMezayf and Divrayim, it refers to people who they falsify their words. But Rabbi Lazar, Roman, Rabbi Lazar says, Al Shem Mekom, and again, it's because of where they came from. Kedech Ziv, Zif, Vetelem, Uvalos, again, these are all names of places. 
And Rashi explains, Chutz midvash, midvash zifin shu of ma'od. Again, it's a very thick substance. When you pour it, it actually goes, it actually travels back because it's so thick, and that's why it can make the vessel that you're pouring from, it can make it impure. Shemizaifin bo, that they can falsify it. Mitoch shu tov because it's such a thick and good honey. Ma'arvin bo mayim v'yayin ve'en nikaros bo. They can mix into it water and wine, and no one's going to recognize that that's what they did. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Upasko anshe amona, that when the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, the men of faith ceased to exist. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak says, Eilu b'nei adam she'en ma'aminen ba'kodesh baruchu. This refers to people who have faith in ha'kodesh baruchu. Titania, as we learned in Abraiser, Rabbi Eliezer HaGadol Omer, Rabbi Eliezer HaGadol says, Kal mishi yesh lo pas besalo, anybody who has bread in his basket. The Omer, he says, ma'ochel amochel, what am I going to eat tomorrow? Eino elam ikatane amona. Such, pers- such a person is only among those who don't have faith, who have little faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. V'hainu damar Rebbe Lazar, and that's what Rebbe Lazar said, Ma'i dechsev, what does it mean when it's written in the Pasuk, ki mi boz liyom ketanos, because who plunders on the day of the small things? What it means is as follows, mi goram la tzadikim she yisbaz beis shulchanan la sed lavo. What causes that the tzadikim, they lose their table in the world to come, they lose their reward in the world, in the world to come? It's the smallness in them that they did not, that they did not have faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Rava Amar Rava says a different explanation of the Pasuk, Elo Ketane B'nei Risha Yisrael. This refers to the young children of the wicked ones of Israel. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Memtes Ahmed Aleph.